Hi, everybody, and welcome to a kind of impromptu episode that I decided to make briefly touching on the prevalence of Christian nationalism and the rising satanic panic. I'm also using a new computer, so let me know if this episode sounds okay, and if not, hopefully I'll be able to get a mic by next episode. For those who believe Christian nationalism is some sort of political talking point or dog whistle, I can assure you this is not the case. I wrote and made an episode earlier this year about my experience at a Christian nationalist convention, much of which the church posted online, and these content creators are raking in thousands of views an hour. There seems to have been an explosion in popularity of this since the Olympic opening ceremony, which Christian nationalists and many others viewed as satanic or demonic, and the ceremonies were accused of mocking Christianity. The threat that this Christian nationalist ideology poses is not tied solely to the success of one candidate or even political party. It has been growing for decades and will far outlive this election cycle. It is not even just solely an American problem, as seen in far-right calls that Christ is king in recent English protests. Christian nationalism and QAnon have played a massive role in bringing fears of Satanism back into public discourse. Perhaps most infamously was the Pizzagate incident, where a man brought a gun to a pizza joint, believing that codes in Hillary Clinton's emails revealed a satanic child trafficking ring being run out of the pizza joint. A decent portion of the American population believes in underground satanic cults operating on a massive scale, often including government officials, and this is usually Republicans accusing Democrats of being part of the satanic cult. The satanic temple has also brought a lot of attention to satanism, for better or worse. Agree or disagree with the temple's actions, their public displays of satanism have stoked panic, satanic panic fears, especially with the organization's attempt to protect abortion rights by labeling abortion as a satanic ritual. This has been used as fuel on the fire against both abortion and Satanism, finally quote-unquote proof enough of Satanic ritual abuse, or that abortion is a Satanic sacrifice of human life. Again, for better or worse, groups like the Church of Satan have also played a role in this, as the group has become representative of Satanism in the mainstream mind, and yet it tells the world that there are inverted Christian devil worshippers out there anytime someone outside of the Church identifies as a Satanist or with Satanism. All of these and related behaviors that I've listed here just really need to be evaluated at this point, and a lot of them I, I believe need to stop outright. It's important to note that this satanic panic will hardly stop at one kind of Satanism or at, or at Satanism at all. To the Christian nationalists, everything that is not their version of Christianity is demonic Satanism. Satan is around every corner and in every cloud. For example, when people tried to explain that the opening and closing ceremonies of the Olympics were not satanic, but rather rooted in polytheistic myth, the Christian nationalists simply responded that all such things are satanic anyways. All non-Christian traditions, as they understand Christianity, are satanic. They do not care if you're an atheist or a theist, if you like Anton LaVey or Lucian Greaves more, if you're a Luciferian or a Setian, or even a Wiccan or Thelemite. Hell, they don't even care if you're a Buddhist or a Muslim or anything else. If you're not a Christian nationalist, you're worshipping the devil to them, consciously or not. While it is noble that we try to live in a society of pluralism and diversity, even if we fall desperately short of that at times. With cases like Christian nationalism, there's no room for pluralism and diversity. One must get with the program or risk losing their rights or even life. This is not the first time a monotheistic movement has reacted with hostility to polytheism, atheism, or anything it sees as Satanism, with two examples being Akhenaten of Egypt and the rise of Christianity in Rome. In the former case, people saw the advent of monotheism as the hostile movement and ideology it was, rejected it, and then literally left it buried in the sands of time. Here, monotheism only lasted for a single king, maybe slightly beyond, and then it failed. However, in the case of Christianity and Rome, monotheism was seen as just another tradition, just another god and way to view the world. And so it was able to not only take the majority, but slaughter and destroy all which got in its path. There, these are two of the possible options in front of us right now, with Christian nationalism being the leading risk of the latter, in my opinion. At least in the United States. To me, one of the best ways to combat this is embracing the satanic archetype Christian nationalists so desperately want to see in the world, like Byron embracing the satanic label from Southie and then writing Cain. A common reaction from Christians has been that God is not mocked, but considering the outrage at the ceremonies, mocking this God seems relatively simple and also effective. The very works that Christian nationalism rests upon are not only dangerous for any society that seeks independence and individuation, but they are contradictory, flawed, and often work directly against Christian nationalism. For instance, the story of Genesis show that God creates humans shows that God creates humans as mindless animals to worship him, that he punishes unjustly, that he craves bloody sacrifice, that he lacks lovingness, knowledge, and power. Those listening to this podcast are probably already well aware of all these things. But Christian nationalism will never understand things in our terms or in terms of even objective reality, such as refusing to understand the difference between ancient polytheism and actual contemporary Satanism. This means that we must instead understand things in their terms. 
This is the only way we're going to be able to get through to a Christian nationalist. The only hope of helping somebody escape this degrading and self-hating worldview that's dangerous to everybody who's not a Christian nationalist. All this has placed a great weight on the shoulder of the satanic tradition, one which the tradition is absolutely crumbling under, in my opinion. Satanism just keeps getting edgier and more fractured as time goes on. It has fallen as far from the romantic Byron as Lucifer fell from heaven in Catholicism, but in this case it's hard to put a positive spin on things. Was a dark, edgy aesthetic intimately engaged with consumerism really the right way to go for Satanism? Abortion rituals, infighting, cults of personality, is this how it should have gone? I don't believe so. Indeed, I let this failure as I see it drive me from the tradition for several years before I went to the Christian Nationalist Convention and saw the need for this community, but came back to find it in even greater disarray than before. So what is the solution? I honestly don't know. I think first people need to recognize and focus on the real problems, though, and maybe bring Satanism into a more positive, more mature light. It is not Satanists or left-hand pathers of another path than us that are a threat to us right now. It's Christian nationalism. It's not just a specific candidate that is a threat to us right now. It's Christian nationalism. It's not about atheism versus theism or Lucian versus Graves versus Greaves versus Aquino or anything like that. What is a threat to us is Christian nationalism. I implore Satanists who are in a position where they are able to cause change to encourage these Satanic traditions to grow up. The baby phase has been over since LeVay was still alive and it's time for the edgy adolescent phase to end. Let Satanism come into being as something fresh and mature. Let Satan don his suit and tie and enter into the adult phase of his post-enlightenment existence. Or alternatively, you know, don't. And we keep doing what we've been doing for the last 60 years. We stagnate. But it is here I am inclined to remind you that within one year in the late 1600s, 20 people were murdered in Salem under false accusations of witchcraft and Satanism. And they were just a tiny drop in an ocean that was 300 years long and saw thousands of innocents killed under similar accusations. I must remind you that 60 people from the satanic panic of the 80s and 90s have been exonerated. That's 60 people whose lives were ruined in the panic, and that's only what the government has acknowledged, and not everyone who suffered under these false accusations. I must remind you that political candidates feel safe vandalizing satanic displays proudly and publicly. That Arizona attempted to ban any so-called satanic symbols in public that Utah has enacted laws with satanic ritual abuse language, and that Native American girls are being kicked out of their schools for being Satanists after engaging in traditional ceremonies. And these are all people who are not Satanists or part of the left-hand path. So imagine what this would look like for an actual member of the left-hand path. Moving forward, moving forward seems to be the most enticing option to me, but one the community must, at large must decide to do. Otherwise, I think it's best of luck to everybody in the upcoming panic. Either way, as always, I appreciate the listen. I apologize for kind of the more somber, serious tone of this episode, and I will see you guys next time.